Welcome back. I'm Emily at Emily's Podcast, Tribute to All Little Angels. Part 2, Episode 1 of Refresh Our Memory. Last week, I had gave a couple examples of proof in the pictures. And I want to share another piece of proof that the headstones have been moved. Not one, not five or six, but a lot of them. By saying, in the early years of Megan being laid to rest west of the South Tree, there is a blue with white letter sign that stands east of the South Tree. That reads, Babyland 6 West. It had sat there from the early 2000s until, well, still to this day, January 10th, 2024. Now let me tell you how I know, and anyone would know, if someone would look at the pictures. The blue and white Babyland 6 West sign in the pictures from the early 2000s shows the sign east in front of the south tree. And two days after the flood, it still stood in front east of the south tree, the existing tree. Now, do you really believe anyone, someone, went to the cemetery within the two days of the street being closed after the flood and the cemetery was also closed, that someone would move that Baby Land 6th West sign from the area where they claim they cut down the South Tree. And then on May 9, 2015, two days after the rain fell, I'm at the cemetery taking pictures and it shows in the pictures no blue and white baby land six west sign in that area where the headstones were washed away to and they claim the south tree was cut down and the existing tree is still standing is the north tree but the tree standing has the same blue and white baby land six west sign that still stands from the early 2000s. The existing tree with the blue and white baby land six west sign is the south tree. They did not cut out the south tree in October 2016 because if they did, there would be no trees in that area because the north tree was cut out in 2010, 2011, due to being cracked in half from a storm. What do you think? May 23rd, 2021. This afternoon, I started separating copies of the pictures to put them in order. I have them in stacks laying on top of the pool table, and I need to put them in order and separate them in their own file. When I took a break, Madison, Zoe, and I went to the cemetery, and it has been raining. And of course, when I pull in, I drove to see Wyatt, and there is water laying on the ground. I took a few pictures, and we left the cemetery. May 25th, 2021. Today, a day of waiting anxiously, waiting to see how Megan's ad looks in the newspaper tomorrow. May 26, 2021. Megan's ad is in the Epic Times newspaper. It's a bittersweet moment, but I'm excited about the paper being out. And now I hope. May 27, 2021, 10.20 a.m., I did receive a copy paper of the ad in the Epic Times newspaper. Megan, my angel, is in the newspaper for the third time. And the third time could be a lucky charm. While Patty and I talked this morning also, 
She wanted me to send her a picture of the newspaper ad. And of course I had to say, I'm waiting on Madison. Patty asked, you haven't opened it yet? I said, no, I'm waiting on Madison to get off work to open it. I mean, after all, Madison has been a big part of this and a big help. Patty said, M, that's a nice idea. Yes, yeah, she has been. She has been a great help. Then Patty asked me to call her when Madison gets off work. At 12.51 p.m., Joe from Epic Times newspaper emailed me. She messaged to let me know the ad is published in this week's paper, told me the ad is at the top left corner of the classified section. She also sent a picture of the page the ad was on, and I thank her so very much. Thank you, Joe. Madison came in from work not long after, and she opened the paper to find Megan's ad, and it does look good. And we were happy about it. The ad will be running on Wednesdays until June 16th. May 29th, 2021. Enjoying family and friends for a barbecue and to swim. While sitting outside, I seen the time, 2.22 p.m. The number sequel means not to give up, more or less, and to stay positive. And I just want everyone to know, the angels above, even God, I'm not giving up on this. This is not right, and it needs to be fixed. And I do know, it is out there. The story has been told, and is being told as we speak. Madison and I went to the cemetery this afternoon, and we went to visit for Memorial Day. There is water laying on the ground, and I did take a few pictures. And it's just so sad that on this weekend, people can't get close enough to the headstones to visit. It's sad, but it's true. June 1st, 2021. It's been an emotional morning. My chest is heavy. My thoughts are foggy of why no one wants to listen. No one wants to fix this. And the tears just kept running down my face. Damn, why is this happening to me? Why doesn't anyone care? There has to be someone. I sat at the edge of my bed and cried. The weight is so heavy. I sat there and prayed to God and to my angels to take this from me. I told them it was just too heavy. I can't carry it no more. After making the bed and leaving the room, tears still running down my face, I start cleaning to keep my mind busy, to keep me busy. And as the morning turned into afternoon, I noticed my chest wasn't tight anymore. The weight that was on me had been lifted, and I took a deep breath. I looked up and said, thank you, God. Thank you, my angels. And believe me, it kept me from going to unwanted feelings and tears. June 2nd, 2021. Today is the second week the ad went out in the Epic Times newspaper and I pray it works. This afternoon at 12.04 p.m., I was thinking and a thought came to mind, so I wrote a paragraph on the cemetery cover-up page, and it said, May 9, 2015, two days after water floods a cemetery and moves headstones to not put them back, but to smash them down in the ground, say they cut down a tree, a tree that never stood there, to then widening a street corner to let us all believe the headstones have not been moved. Yeah, that's the right thing. It's not the right thing. It's misleading. 
it's disrespectful, not just for the living of the deceased, but the dead also. My opinion. It felt right to post, because like I say, I have to try everything. My day is a little less stressful. At 7.40 p.m. this evening, Madison is at work, so Zoe, Megan's younger sister, and I went to the cemetery. I pull in, and the grounds are saturated with water, and it hasn't rained since Monday. This is Wednesday. How can others not see this? This is not right. I drove back to visit Wyatt, then around to visit Megan, and her flowers are still stuck in the ground because yes, it is flooded. And of course I took pictures. And it just seems that Babyland 6 West is and does swim with the fish in a cemetery. So sad. It's really just so sad. I sat with her for a little while in my car, of course, and I talked. I prayed to God, and I said, God, I know I call on you quite a bit, and I'm not sorry, because through these years, I have learned over the, the years don't say you're sorry for what you know to be true or right. But I do pray someone comes to us to help true-heartedly. June 3rd, 2021. Today I tried to enjoy the day outside and at times when I'm done doing something, anything to help them loved ones, it grinds at my heart. I sat in a lawn chair on my patio and I asked my angels to give me a sign of what I need to do. And I know she will. June 7th, 2021. This morning I stayed busy to not think too much. But later this afternoon, I did write down some notes to help draft a new law. If I can get someone to back us. I also wrote what had happened briefly. I wrote about the day of the digging. I listed what the funeral home had listed on the items in the casket they dug up under Megan's headstone where it was washed away to after a flood. But the list consisted of a pendant, a crocheted blanket, and a liner. The Bible wasn't mentioned, but Daryl from the funeral home picked Megan's Bible up out of the casket that does not look like Megan's casket that we buried her in. The crocheted blanket in the Bible was found in a casket that doesn't look like the casket we buried Megan in, and they were the two items that my attorney mentioned to the city to identify Megan under a headstone that had dark lines one on each side of where they dug that headstone up. But where are the other items she was buried with? I have pictures of Megan's funeral and her E.T. baby face wrapped in white blankets. She was dressed in a white dress. I still have the bottoms to that little white dress. It was too big for her but the bottoms are in a Ziploc bag in a Winnie the Pooh diaper bag, still to this day. The funeral home did not list the Bible. So where is the Bible? Oh, and the dark lines were not noticed on the, until the evening of November 26, 2019, the same evening of the digging. Four days after the men were working on the east-west street corner, widening that street corner, and a picture showing a long pole in the grass east of the south tree. And yet here we are, still trying to prove what they have done. 
At 7.41 p.m., Madison and I went to the cemetery. There are areas still flooded. It's been flooded for weeks. And the drains were fixed in September, October 2019, just months before the day of the digging up Megan's headstone. June 8, 2021. In my mind, I want this over as soon as possible. But as I know, this kind of thing is on God's time. The truth does come out. And please believe me, if none of this is accurate, if none of this is true, how do I have all the proof, the proof to the story of the ones laid to rest? Why would I? And I know for as long as I've been telling this story for the loved ones laid to rest, my story hasn't changed. It will not change. It will be nine years in May 2024. And I will go into 10 years if that's where God tends for it to go. Because I'm not going to quit sharing the truth I'm not going to do that to Megan or the rest of them, believe me or not. And I know to, to out all of the millions of people in this world, there will be one. One person will have heart. I went to check the mail this afternoon and I received another case file back. That makes three, so not too bad. June 9, 2021. Today is the first day of the third week of the ad in the Epic Times. The day isn't going as smoothly as it could. I'm emotional, and I do pray to Megan, what else can I do? What else should I do? Please guide me, baby. Show me what and how to do it. Later this afternoon, we went to the cemetery, and man, oh man, water still laying on the grounds. I took pictures, you already know. I prayed to my angels to watch over me and to guide me, and I prayed to not give me too many more of the emotional mornings I have. I just can't seem to take them. I asked God to help us. And then at 9.21 this evening, Patty messaged. She asked me to send her some pictures of the cemetery flooded at different times. I sent her four the first time. Then I sent her two more again. And then I sent her five. Patty says, I want to post them and leave a comment and say something like, this gets me. Now, how can I put flowers on the grave I am visiting? I guess I will have to wear rubber boots. This is a bunch of bullshit. One does not deserve. Death is hard enough. Goodbyes are even harder since all you have are memories. And thank you for that, Patty. June 10th, 2021 at 9.09 a.m., this morning, my phone dinged as if I had a message. I paused for a moment, and then I picked up the phone, and it's a message from my niece, Jen. She wrote, Aunt M, you should go and check out the comments on the cemetery post. The daughter of the one lady that is buried in the cemetery is commenting. The woman commented, They did put in better drainage. And it did make it better, but it isn't enough. They obviously don't care to fix the whole cemetery. I am going to bring dirt out and fill in around my mom's headstone where it still holds water. It is the city of Moore's responsibility. However, it's been two and a half years and it's time I just do right by my mom. Thank you for posting this. My mother would be so proud that her fight for this matter 
is being continued. My niece Jen then responded to her that said, we want to try as much as possible to bring justice to everyone that is having issues at this cemetery. It needs to be fixed and they need to stop covering up what they did. The woman then responded back, justice comes in all forms. We can call them out again publicly doing what they should have been doing. That is sweet justice. They can't explain away loved ones coming out and fixing the problems that their drainage has caused. We can get enough people together and go out and start filling in the erosion from the drainage problem and have all the news stations there when we do it. My niece Jen wrote back, my aunt has been trying to get answers for years now and still to this day hasn't gotten any. She has tried so many different things. That's when I jumped in on the conversation and I wrote, Yes, let's do that. I'm sending files at, out as of what and when they did what they did to my granddaughter, who is buried in Babyland 6 West. It's always flooded, even now as of yesterday. Then I wrote, if you have any, anyone we can contact and others can get involved, I would greatly appreciate it. Any help from anyone, thank you. I will not give up until they fix it. The woman responded, I'm on it. Then she wrote, contact the local VFWs because some of those are veterans that are out there. That's what I told the city I was going to do. And they didn't fill in my grandfather's grave. And then lo and behold, it got done fast. My friend Patty jumped in on the conversation and wrote, that's a great idea. And then I wrote again, thank you. And I will contact anyone and everyone as I have been doing. And I have contacted the news stations, newspapers, senators, state representatives, which have all given me good pointers and are greatly appreciated. And I am now going to send files to the governors around the state of Oklahoma because I got to try everything. And then at 9.23 a.m., I sent Jen a text message. We talked about what the woman had said, and I greatly appreciate Jen letting me know of the woman's comment. And as Jen and I said, there is another person who has complained for years, not just me. The newspaper also posted today on the cemetery cover up page. And at 9.34 a.m., Patty called and we talked a while about the comments on the cemetery page. Patty then offered to talk to some of the veterans that she knows at her local BFW hall. And oh my gosh, I greatly appreciate it all. If you have any comments or questions, you may contact at lowercase letters, Emily McMahon, E-M-I-L-Y, M-C-M-A-H-A-N, 208 at gmail.com and or S-D McMahon1959 at gmail.com. And you may also call 220-215-5130 and leave your name and a message and we will return your call. You may also find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, Samsung Podcast, Podcast Index Audible, Listen Notes, RSS.com Community, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, and it's also on 
rsspublic.com, and YouTube. Thank you for listening, and stay kind with your words.